Hi guys, Kim here. The Rise of the Rainbow Warriors. I'd like to say that in order to perceive this concept, one must have at least some knowledge of the chakra system, as it's through the system that we master the energies of self and therefore become aware of the steps we need to take, or at least the adjustments within self where we become aware of where we are accidentally giving our power away, or the need to adjust our focus so we align greater with the essence of living within our highest integrity. There's an American Indian prophecy that went something like this. Native prophecies say that mixed blood and white people who grew their hair long and wore beads would come to the native healers and ask for guidance. The prophecies say that they would return as rainbow people in bodies of different colours, red, white, yellow, black. The old ones say that they would return to unite and help to restore the balance of earth. So in my book, We Me, A Journey of Self-Responsibility, I wrote a chapter about the waste. And this morning, I perceived the idea of this being symbolized in the concept of the rainbow warriors. So this concept came to me upon returning from a near-death experience. I had a number of interactions with the purest of thought forms who related to me a number of interesting subjects, one of which was the waste. It seems that the divine creator often inspires us through cryptic means, and this was one such case. I went to sleep, and I awoke with a question in my head. Can you spell waste? I asked W-A-S-T-E waste, or W-A-I-S-T waste. And the voice in my head said exactly. And then I asked why. And the next question came and said, where is your waist? And I said, around the middle part of my body. The consciousness then said to me, so you can assume it is no accident that the middle part of your body is called a waist. That would be a waist beneath the waist, which confused me. Then the clarification came and it said, so... What is the energy of someone giving focus, living beneath the root chakra? What would they be doing if their energy was wholly and solely focused on that aspect? So say the individual is working full time, not liking what they do for a living, not liking the individuals that they work with, but going to work each day to pay the bills, coming home at night, tired, drained, making dinner as chore as they need to eat, going to bed, waking up, rinse, repeat. This might be a representation of someone living purely in the root chakra, therefore depicting living beneath the waist. I went on to ask, what is this person to do? They're doing what they need to do in order to survive. And the answer came back and said, change it. But how? I asked. We've got no money left at the end of the week. You said you need money to change your world, was the response. At a base level, people might think that they need to win the lotto, then things might change for the better. But other than that, what options do they have? Change the focus was the answer. It went on to describe that this related to a consciousness of mankind, and it showed me that within each of the chakras of the body, our consciousness was expressed, and that we could focus our intention through one or all of our chakras. There was a warning that if we focus too much energy or attention to the energy of one particular chakra, that this could lead to our fail or fall, or our inability to deal with what life was offering us. Where the focus goes, grows. Whatsoever you are giving focus to will be amplified. The three lower chakras being the base, the sacral, and the solar plexus. If you're focusing on your base, your reality would be focusing on the basics, eating, where to live, going to work, earning money. The next chakra would be the sacral, the desire for physical association and all of the myriad offshoots, what you would be focusing on, how to look, how you look, how you get to look like that, your social life, your sexual. The next one is the solar plexus, which is where we shine from, our inner light, what we beam out to others, our self-esteem, the ego. The solar plexus is technically on the waist, but it's showing to me that's perhaps the most damaging of all of the other chakras to be living in, out of balance and in focus. The previous two chakras centered mainly on damage to self, whereas the solar plexus in personal power 
If a person is living in a chakra out of balance, they would likely show narcissistic tendencies at best, and at worst be full-blown narcissists affecting many. It was kind of strange because it's a higher vibration and therefore you would think their capacity for kindness would be stronger. But alas, someone living in this energy imbalance would likely be very ego-centered, self-centered, no pun intended there, but there is an observation of coincidence in describing the word. They're often very talented people, people in positions of power. Not in any way bad, if they're balanced, but pure poison to those around them if they're not. What was relayed to me was that people who were focusing their energy solely towards one of these three lower chakras below the waist was a waste. It told me that humanity struggles so much because their focus, they focus too much energy and concentration to the lower chakras. And it isn't until you teach yourself to use all of the chakra energies in combination and in balance that you tend to feel a sense of relief. The four higher chakras above the waist would be heart, what would love to, throat, speech, and truth always. That I, intuition, or imagination, and crown your spiritual connection to yourself, others, the universe, and life's purpose. I can tell you a couple of examples where, when this energy interacts, can conflict. So, the following case might be uh, in the throat chakra, in conflict with the sacred. In such a case, the following thought might be, what will he think of me if I tell him that? Oh, I better not say anything, you might not like me anymore. So because of that, you may suppress the desire to speak your truth through fear of repercussion. Therefore, you're not aligning yourself or your inner soul, and instead allowing the lower chakra energy to suppress your expressions. Another example might be the base chakra in conflict with the third eye. You're going for an interview for a job. It's important for your security that you get the job. On the way, you lose your car keys, your soul falls off your shoe, and there's a furniture removal van blocking your exit from the driveway. Your gut instinct would be to tell you that this is not right. However, if you were to continue on the path regardless, it would be likely that the job was not meant. You would be giving greater energy to your root-based needs rather than listening to your inner voice. I've given you two examples. I could go on. A part of this energy has been aware for yourself of your own inner conflicts and taking responsibility to recognize and fix yourself. It's complex, I know, but many of us are stuck below the waist, too much worrying about irrelevant stuff rather than focusing on what is really our best potential for ourselves. Speaking our truth, paying attention to what our inner voice and consciousness says and live with integrity. We need to act with ethics, responsibility, walking our talk regardless. Only by doing this can we hope to bring out self into balance and create a better world for all. Nothing I say here is easy. Sometimes it takes years to get yourself to remember through continuous self-correction, mainly after the fact. Be mindful of your own ethics. And if you do say or do something that's not in alignment with your own ethics, then be mindful that you haven't done it. Then the next time, be mindful again, and eventually you'll get to the stage where it sinks in and it becomes part of your natural being. All of these energies are important, don't get me wrong. We need all of these areas in order to survive this reality. Just be mindful to give focus to the spectrum. It may, it may be necessary for you to do further research into what each chakra represents, but I'm not going to give you any further descriptions. This is a great deal of material out there on the subject. It seems to me that people are not bad at all. They just get dragged down a path of disillusionment through desire, greed, despair, fear, or even just the need to please save another. If we, humanity, bring our consciousness above the ways, we could flip polarities too, go from being negative to positive. I think I read somewhere that 71% of humanity's consciousness lives in the negative aspect of self. So in that living with the focus beneath the weight. If that is true, then no wonder this world is so messed up. What I'm talking about here could be that the people who are living in the condition of using and utilizing the rainbow spectrum, the chakra system, could actually be those individuals who are balancing the world energy. And therefore they could be the rainbow warriors. Thanks for listening.